What's, What's up, up guys? guys? On this week's show. <laughs> R.I.P. iTunes. <laughs> and Donald Trump taxes video games? All that and more on this episode of One Giant Leap for Geeks. Cue the music. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for man. Geeks. Welcome to another episode of OGLFG, where we talk about movies, video games, and all things in geek culture. I'm your host, Mike C Squared, and with me are my co-hosts, Benoit. It seems the problem resolved itself. And DJ Melly Mel. <laughs> hey! All right, kids, before we get started, I want to let you know, if you enjoy the show, tell your goddamn friends about us. Please! Share us on your social media. Whatever you choose to do, know that you are helping us let others know about the best damn podcast they've probably never heard of. Now, if you want to talk to us, the show is on Twitter at Giant Leap, the number four geeks. You can get a hold of our resident DJ Melly Mel at Froggy Beaver and Benoit's at Benoit Gaming. That's B E N W A H Gaming. If you're like me and around my age, you're a sucker for nostalgia, especially 80s and 90s. I'm talking music, movies, television, games, just pop culture as a whole. So, if you're from mid-Michigan or going to be traveling to the area, I suggest you check out Rewind and Birch Run. Rewind is a vintage-inspired blast from the past with not just cool trinkets and novelty items, but dope gear to rock as well. I'm talking shirts, jackets, caps, and even sneakers. Retro styles to make your inner child smile. Absolutely, positively, definitely check out Rewind. You might even see your boy Benoit copping something old school or shooting the breeze with the owner, Tyler. Rewind is right off of I-75, exit 136 in the Birch Run Premium Outlets, Section E, next to Crocs. Woo, doggy! What you been doing? Today, or, today's been hell, but this week has been full of adventure. Oh, okay. I like adventures. Um, not quite the adventure you're thinking. Okay. Lots and lots of people crammed into one... We'll just say, phenomenal cosmic powers, and y'all know the rest. You'd be living space. Okay. All okay. right. So we have like fourteen people staying at my house. God damn. I have a. This has escalated. Bedroom. Okay. Is they're your last only name Walton? Week. Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. No, no. Right. Um, they're only staying a week, so they'll be gone by next Tuesday. Do like, you start a cult? Like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> yes, yes, I did. They're all just my followers. Right, right, right. The, the people from Twitter, they're finding me at home, and I'm taking Ah, their name. okay, I got you. I got you. All, all you be careful with of that my shit. Followers. <laughs> Anyways, no. Uh, everybody come up from Louisiana this mm. weekend. Okay. It took them three days to get there. They left Saturday night at midnight. Okay. They didn't get to my house until 6.30 on Monday morning. All right. So, they're all staying in my house. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. T Money's happy. He gets to see his family. Well, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, still, I, I could see how that could be a little, a little, a little cramped, a little bit, mm, just yeah. a, a wee bit, a wee bit. Yeah. Um, especially when they have a pickup truck and they filled the entire bed of said pickup truck with stuff. Oh, hell no. Nah. And I said, are y'all moving in or what, what's going said, on hell here? yeah. They said, oh, no, we just pack heavy. Yeah. So no. we just parked a trailer right in front of your apartment. And Mind we just you, when I went to their house, mm. I had one duffel bag for T-Money and myself together. Yeah, just a little weekend bag and just, called it good. That's it. That's all we need. And we were there for a week. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, some people, you know, got to have the essentials. You know, I guess bring your Xbox and whatever just, else. Just short. <laughs> the the one boy brought his own games. Well, I mean, I I would do that when I was young. Like I would bring like my Genesis or whatever. Or he just brought the discs because yeah. T Money's got a yeah PS4. So yeah, yeah, okay, okay. But yeah, I've been chilling with the fam. Sounds fun. What about you, Ben? What you been doing? It's nice to be a part of the podcast again after last week. I know you've been gone. Since See, you've been gone. For the Oh, God, please don't. Um, <laughs> for those I of really you that don't know, know, I was available last week. However, I was not available. I know I just contradicted myself, but 
Here's why. Uh, a couple weekends ago, I was having issues with my phone. It was dropping calls mm-hmm. left and right. Everybody who called me, the call would get dropped. At first, I assumed it was everybody who was talking to me until mm-hmm. my phone dropped a call to a landline. <laughs> so I, uh, I went into the Verizon store Tuesday morning, uh, breaking the fourth wall again. People who listen to this regularly probably realize we do record on Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess they can, um, you know, IT or whatever, can check your phone via phone call. And so... I scheduled an appointment. Well, I didn't schedule it. The, the, the soonest, earliest time I could have a, an appointment scheduled was for when we would normally record the podcast. So I was on the phone with a Verizon rep um, who basically uh, wanted me to download this application to my phone from which I guess they could somehow access it to troubleshoot. I, I don't know exactly what it was going to do because uh, all the times I tried to open the program, it came up to a blank white screen. And I was on the phone with them for about an hour to an hour and a half, uh, three separate conversations because I kept having to reboot my phone to see if this program would work. Uh, The program never worked. And at the end of all of it, the man said that it seems like the problem resolved itself. And I have not dropped a call since. So I have no fucking clue what happened. I just rebooted my phone and that seemed to work. Um, You know, I had rebooted my phone before and it didn't work. So I don't fucking know what's wrong with my phone. But thank you, Verizon. (laughs) <laughs> what kind of it, phone do you have? I I don't fucking know the name of do it. Do you have an I? iPhone? No, 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 no. You have an Android. Android. I have okay. an Android, yes. To save an hour and a half of your time next time, pop your SIM card out for about 30 seconds and then pop it back in. It should medium reset your phone so where it's not, you don't lose all your shit, but it does more than turning it off and turning it back on. Okay, you see, because when I was at the Verizon store, that's what the guy did. First off, he popped out my SIM card, put it back in, and from that okay. moment on, I had no issue. That's what it was then. Yeah, because I'm like, every now and then mine will do that, but... My work phone did that today. Yeah, I was like, usually that's mine why I just didn't have any so internet. Far. Yeah, okay, yeah, well, yeah. I... because me and Benoit were having a conversation, and it kept dropping, and he thought it was me, and I was like, that's weird, I'm just sitting in my driveway. I'm like, I'm not in like a you know, remote location or something right. where I'm like away from towers. Right. But then when he said he dropped a landline call, I was like, oh yeah. And another thing that bothers me about this whole cell phone uh, thing, not just with Verizon, but probably with like Sprint or at t or any other company. I don't like how these phones are only made to last for like two to three years. And so oh, yeah. they intentionally set you up with these contracts where, Hey, you, you sign up for two years, we'll give you this new phone, but we're not going to give it to you. We're just going to charge you in installments. You pay an extra 15 to 30 bucks a month on your phone bill, and then, hey, in a couple years, that phone's paid off. But at oh, the see, end of I that two years, that at the end of that two years, your phone's outdated and starts to fall apart. So it's yep. like, you sons of bitches. Yep. Yeah, yep. see, I don't have that problem because I buy unlocked phones online and just transfer in my SIM card. And so when my phone stops working, I just buy another one online. Oh, wow. See, yeah, no, I, I, I know what you mean, though, because they, 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 the whole idea is they set you up to where you get a new phone and they give you installment payments to pay it off just long enough to where the next generation of that phone comes mm-hmm. out. So the moment it's paid off, they're like, no, 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 it's okay. We can upgrade you to a new phone. Mm-hmm. And then you and can then start, you can just start all over lower. again. So yeah, then exactly. they constantly got you on the hook to keep paying on a phone for like ever. You know, You're always indebted to them under contract. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. That's why I don't do contracts. Yep. I did it once and it racked up a three thousand dollar bill. God damn. What were you calling Africa? What Yeah, I know. I was no, gonna say I'm like <laughs> I had uh, she was trying to download the entire internet's worth of knowledge or some shit. I had a twelve hundred dollar bill, uh-huh. and the rest is all fees and cancellation and prices for the phone oh, because my that. roommates conned me into getting them phones as well. So I had four lines with oh, four yeah. S fives. Hell no! When they were brand new. Nope. Well, nope. this is why you don't have roommates. You're right. This you're is right. why I don't have a contract phone anymore, or why I don't have roommates. Fuck that noise. Like my as like thirty people were staying at your house. <laughs> no, that's different though. That's different. That's different. Uh, but as for myself, um, nothing personally any fun stories to share. But I do have some news about the podcast. 
Okay. So, um, are we moving on up? Um, no. Oh. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. Um, as, as, um, you know, those who've listened for a while may know, I, I've always been kind of apprehensive about, you know, I, I, this is my passion that I do for fun. I I like doing this because I just like talking about pop culture and movies and comics and superheroes and stuff in general. Right. So I was like, why not do it and, you know, give this to other people? Plus, I just love hearing the sound of my own voice. So why not do it, right? Sure. No. um, Sounds about right. I Shut up. (laughs) I, I have been always really timid about branching out and trying to do more with the podcast than just us sitting around and just talking. But I do have a couple fun things planned for an upcoming episode. Um, it's going to be probably the most ambitious thing I've done with the podcast so far. It's going to be a big collaboration. I'm not going to spoil what it's going to be just yet, but just know that in the next couple of weeks, hopefully if everything goes right, I'm going to have a bunch of different, people on and we're going to talk about a thing and it's going to be good times but other than that um i i've been planning some other things where i've been reaching out to some other creators who have a much 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 bigger imprint and platform than we do and trying to see if i can maybe kind of sort of coax them into coming on the show and coming in let me do a little interview with them that Um, would be legit i'm not going to name drop anybody yet because i'm still in the gestation phases so i'm not i'm not gonna be like yes and then tom cruise will be you know on the show next week Um, well since many politicians are trying to you know ban abortion this is a good deal then right what's gonna happen you can't oh yeah totally totally (laughs) no morning and after podcast nothing like that right right exactly but one one other thing is i am talking to some some designers and and specifically uh shout out to um Jenny Designs um she is the girl who did our logo for the podcast and me and her are talking right now and I'm trying to figure out some different ideas for some merch stuff which I'm again is just in the you know super baby step stages so I don't want to be like yes and then our patented one giant leap for geek coffee mugs are coming out next week like, i found no. those the other day i was cl- i was moving stuff around and cleaning and sure. they're in my closet I oh, found them. Uh, yeah i believe you still got them. i was like oh i should take these to podcast <laughs> and you then know what would be cool though yeah talk talk to your designer i want a sticker Th- these are things that we're talking about so keep, is she keep, single keep keep that in mind um i don't know to be honest with you what's your Good look question like? I say um, before you ask the "what does Jen- she look like" question, Ben, you should probably wolf? ask if she's into dudes or if she's yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So it should be: is she single? Yes or no? Is she into dudes? Yes or no? And then go from there. How Jenny, does she self-identify, Jenny? I hope you're not listening to this. Um, Jenny's a very we just blew girl. all future. Um, yeah, I know. I was gonna say. I was like, yeah. I, she's like, I am not helping you do jack shit. Um, but no. But she. No. No. Jenny's awesome. Um, but yeah, I, I try for you, Jenny. I try. So I, I, I am considering some things to do, and because I do want to reach out to some people who, you know, it would only benefit us to be on a podcast and not them. If anything, it may be detrimental to them to be on podcast. All right, for their all right. image. I I do need a um bait sort of so to speak. So I I've played with the idea before. I've joked about it on the podcast and stuff, but I may be starting a Patreon. Not so much because I can cover the cost of running the show as it is. Sure. Like it's it's not very expensive. I've I've done all the infrastructure investment so as far as that goes i don't need anything for that but the maintenance yeah and it it would more so be to have some monetary incentive for people to come onto the podcast who you know actually get booked for real things and get paid monies and stuff like that so again this is very ambitious i have no idea how this is going to play out and I'm kind of just throwing myself to these people, and I'm just like, hey, I'll suck your dick if you come be on my podcast. Oh, so, my God. Well, okay, maybe not that. I'll say, but... one giant leap for geeks is not. Does not condone dick sucking not for geeks. Does not condone <laughs> prostitution. We need capital so he doesn't have to whore himself. Exactly, exactly. So, so yeah, that being said, I, I am really excited for some of the things that I'm planning. I, 
again, I know I'm being very cryptic. And it's probably frustrating hearing this because it's like, what the fuck are you I talking about? I kind of like it, though. Because, like, it gets the wheels turning. Yeah, but I... Well, I, I don't even know what the hell he's talking about right now. This is exactly. This is exactly. That's because you don't listen. <laughs> well, no, th- this is... I've been on the sidelines doing this for a couple of weeks, and I'm just now getting to the point where I am feeling a little bit more confident to talk about it openly. All right, all right. So, and to introduce us to a side hustle. Step right, it, exactly. Stepping out the closet slowly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're going to start selling turtles. <laughs> but that being said, can we though, name them the, after you know Renaissance painters? Oh, exactly. There you go. See, we'll have our own Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. But anyway, en- enough my, of that. Doing my happy dance for those of you who can't see me. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't want to stay on this too long because I don't have any. But more if you want to see you. DJ Melly Mel dance, just give us no. no yes, exactly. Right. Hey, don't tempt T Money. He's already got video of me dancing. <laughs> Right, Where do right. we insert the tokens? All right. Uh, she will be on OnlyFans.com and no. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Not that kind of dance, Ben. <laughs> That's right. You heard it here, kids. Friend of the show, Tom fucking Cruz, will be featured on the podcast. Hashtag confirmed. I saw this the other day and I was like, you know what? If the Saw movies and Home Alone had a baby, mm-hmm. it would be Rambo Last Blood. Because <laughs> that is literally what I thought of when I saw this. Really? Yes. Because the whole thing is like, okay, so so from the original Rambo and from the, the follow-ups from that, uh, his whole shtick, besides him being like this crazy PST, PTSD, PTSD. you know, written soldier yeah is that he does all these like booby traps and like guerrilla warfare type shit Mm -hmm. and the whole like premise in the trailer is these people come to his you know ranch or whatever and he's got all these booby traps set up in the house and i was like this is pretty much if home alone was rated r like it's that's basically what i if macaulay culkin grew up to be a serial killer it would be this movie that's what I'm, i'm seeing here I don't know. I mean, I've never really been into Rambo. No, ever. That's which is fair, but just but what they showed in this trailer, mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh shit! I can, I can, you know." He's going on John Wick plus. I don't know. Okay. Okay. All right. John Wicky on him. Sure. Right. Right. Uh, John Wick and Home Alone had a baby. There, there yeah. you go. There okay. You go. All right. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I'm interested. Wh- what about you, Benoit? Like, what 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 did you get from the Last Blood trailer? It comes across like you're just generic action film. At this point, Rambo's run his course. I realize yeah. Stallone yeah. wants to do this to make like the legit last thing for Rambo, but mm-hmm. you're already done with Rocky Balboa. Yeah, uh, you should have been done with this a decade mm-hmm. ago. I wonder. If Honestly, he's dying. I don't even think a decade ago. This no. should have been done in the '80s. Well, I'm just saying, I wonder if he's dying because he's, like, finishing off Rocky, he's finishing off Rambo. No, he's just old. He's putting an end to all of his Right, he, he stopped doing time. his Expendables movies now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's only three of them. I think, he just, I think he just wants to retire all of his franchises yeah. in his own way, which I think is kind of commendable, but you don't need to do that, bro. You're fine. Yeah, yeah no, nobody, nobody needed, like closure for the for the rambo yeah. franchise this is falling severely close to the benoit does not give a fuck okay? <laughs> if, if this if this were a reboot as opposed to like a finale of a series it would cross that line mm-hmm. but I- we already know stallone he's already a big name he's already popular he's already got money he's already got fame there's really no need for this he's trying to capitalize on a genre that a modern audience really probably isn't going to give a fuck about. Like, who is this appealing to? Yeah, no, that is true. No, because, th- like you said, this should have ended in the 80s. Probably at the, peak. the 90s. No, no, the 80s at the peak of, like, the big strongman action movies. Like, back I mean, when, like, early 90s. When Jean-Claude and him and Steven Schwarzenegger Chagall. and all them yeah, were, like, yeah, you yeah. know, the action heroes, you know, the big buff dude that just killed dozens of fucking nameless mercenaries and all that. Yeah, like, this, this, this... It, there was a time and a place for movies like this, and I, I agree that 
this is probably way past its sell by date. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. But I I don't care what I have this to title say, says. It's nice to see Stallone looking better than what he did in, in Creed 2, by the way. Yeah, well, he yeah, a mess in Creed yeah. They, they make it a point in that to make him look more rough than what he really does in yeah, real life because yeah, yeah. he still looks pretty good for his age. I mean, oh, he's still in yeah. shape and shit. Yeah. Like he beat my ass. But I I don't care what this title says. This will not be the last Rambo movie. Oh, I'm sure. If this makes money, he will do another one because he said that um, Balboa was the last was going to be the last movie. one. Yeah. And then they talked him into doing the Creed movies. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, he may not direct it per se. Now, I don't even know what the hell they could do after this point. It's like, what is he going to like kill people in a wheelchair? I don't know. But if this makes money, Stallone, I- I'll give him his artistic integrity. And, you know, I-, I will commend him on trying to, like Benoit said, go out on his own, you know, accord. But I feel like if this was to do well, he would make another one in a heartbeat. I disagree, simply because this is going to be produced by his own company, Balboa Productions. This is probably his swan song, and if he decides to stay in film, it will be more behind the scenes, like more uh, Son of Rambo. No, not this. (laughs) But more Creed films, or maybe sure. I mean, maybe, and I do see a potential jump off point for a spinoff in the sense of uh, similar to Rambo. You have like an Iraqi or Afghani war vet go through similar situations in a modern day where it's a a bit of a tie off or a spiritual successor. That's not Rambo. I can see him going that route. Just call it not Rambo. (laughs) Well, some other name or or I could really see him focusing more on, uh, on, um, Michael, uh, Oh God, what the fuck's his name? I'm drawing a blank here. Black Panther. Uh, oh, Michael B. Jordan? Michael B. Jordan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I don't want to... You would think I couldn't forget Michael Jordan, but I don't attribute him with the actual number 23. Um, right. But I can see him only sticking to uh, behind the scenes from this point on. I, I'm willing to believe that this will be the last uh, Rambo film. I'm willing to believe that he'll never be seen again in any of the future Creed films, uh, which just makes me wonder... There's really not going to be any role for Stallone at this point. I'm hoping this is the end. The end all be all. Yeah. And and I mean, we'll see. Like I said, I, I, I he likes being in front of the camera too much, I think, to where he just wouldn't do it at all. Like, I feel like if they came with him to him with the right story, then he'd do it. But we'll see. We'll see. It, it really depends on how this movie ends. Because if they kill him by the end of it, then, you know, fuck. Ain't no more. Ain't, ain't going to be no more. But... For the, the way this seems, though, it's like, I guess he's kind of fighting the cartel mm-hmm. this time. Like, he's not, like, off in some, you know, third world country in a jungle killing people with machetes and shit. Now he's in, like, fucking Texas or some shit. Like, he's a dirt right. farmer, pretty much, because I didn't see no crops or nothing. He has his big-ass ranch and, like, a horse, but I'm like, I don't think he actually does anything, but just stare off into the distance and like you know regret his life decisions i guess like i don't know um my my biggest question is though how is he not in prison as like a terrorist or like at the very least a war criminal like is beyond me because in the first rambo movie he like pretty much decimates an american town yeah like on american soil now granted yes there was some shady shit going on with like the The people there and stuff right but he still like fucked up a lot of shit and was like fighting the national guard and everything else. And I'm like, how is Rambo even allowed back into the States at this point? Cause I'm pretty sure every other movie takes place with him overseas somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Mostly Vietnam. Yeah. So, so like you could like kind of excuse like, okay, well he kind of just left the country and he's just over here doing some crazy shit. But I'm like, now that he's back, it's like, who let you back into the country? Or unless this takes place in Mexico. Could be. But even it then. It explains the dirt. Yeah, even then, I'm like, how is he allowed to just retire, quote unquote? I'm like, yeah, you've, I don't know. you've crossed a line, bro. Like, you can't go back from that. So, I mean, I'm, I'm really interested to see what they do to explain, like, okay, how did he get to this point and where his life has ended him up at and why he kind of has diplomatic immunity, I guess. Because I'm like, maybe that's why, like, they just dump him in the rural part of Texas and be like, okay. No people, no nothing. Right. You're on an ankle bracelet. Right. You, you cannot leave this ranch. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, he's done done some shit. And I mean, granted, yes, 
in the other movies, like he was like, you know, liberating some people from some kind of dictator or drug lord or some kind of shit like that. Cool. But the first movie, you were basically a domestic terrorist. Like, I'm sorry, but you were like, you can't. Yeah, like I said, he blew that fucking town to shit. Like, yeah, he did. I don't give a fuck who you was fighting, man. Like, you property damage alone is like, how do you just walk away from that? And it's like, ah, it's Rambo. It's all good. Like, no, man, no, hell Not no. How this works? Yeah, but anyway, um, this one, Benoit. Do we know when this one comes out? Yes, we do. This one comes out on September twentieth. It's actually going to be out in a few months. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So we'll we'll see what they do to explain this and. I'm really curious to how they tie this up because I, I don't, if they don't kill him, I got a real good feeling that they're going to bring him back some kind of way somehow. Sure. But if he dies off though, then it's like, Hey, then he, he well, that's it. legitimately said I'm done. What comes after last blood, blood transfusion. <laughs> <laughs> like Rambo undead. What, what right. There you, go, zombie Ooh, Rambo. you know what? I would actually watch that movie. That would be pretty dope. Oh man. All right. Moving on. Benoit, I think you may be onto something. They thought he was dead, but the revenge in his heart wouldn't die. Now he's back from the grave and he ain't bullshitting. Starring Sylvester Stallone as John Rambo in Rambo 6 Blood Transfusion. So, we have another Disney Pixar production, mm -hmm. um, Onward. Now, this movie is starring uh, Chris Pratt and Tom Holland, uh, Star-Lord and Spider-Man, respectively. Yep, yep. And um, it's set in, like, a little suburban fantasy world. Um, the brothers are elves, mm -hmm. I guess, is what they're supposed to be. Yes. And they are going on a quest to discover if there's still any magic left out there in their universe in order to try and spend one last day with their father who died when they were too young to remember him. Now, Pixar is really good for always making like entertaining films with some kind of message. Mm -hmm. Like um they did Inside Out mm -hmm. and, you know, Up and uh you know, Toy Story movies and yeah. all that stuff. So it's like they always find a way to insert some kind of meaning in, in their movies. And they always have like a really good, <sighs> I'm, I'll use the word wholesome. I don't want to make it sound like it's like a, a Christian message movie per se, but they always have something about like, Hey, appreciating life or your friends or family yeah. or the time you have or something like that. Some and, life lesson that should be taught to children that isn't always necessarily taught to children. So Pixar's found a way to teach it to children without, being preachy the about it, yeah. Parents and being preachy, yeah, yeah. Like, like they they make a good movie, but it actually has some substance to it. Exactly. So, I mean, just on its face, me watching it, I was like, it kind of felt monsters inky to Kinda. me a little bit. I, I mean, it looked cute, and I watched it with a twelve year old and an eight year old sitting around me, and they're mm. like, "Oh my god, that looks so good!" Yeah. I'm one, I like the Minions, which Minions aren't Disney Pixar. No, no, no. But I like that kind of, mm -hmm. like, I still watch animated. Um, oh, I'm, sure. I'm not going to lie. I still watch animated movies. Sure. Like, T-Money and I have Disney dates all day long. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I think that this is probably going to be another really good Disney Pixar because Disney Pixar, most of them are really good for the most part. Yeah, there, there's, there's, some, there's been some a few stragglers. Ones, I was but, like, yeah. Mm, but yeah, not so they much. have a they have a good batting average. Yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. I I would take their win percentage over loss any yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I I mean I'm interested. Even I think T Money would be if he had seen the trailer because mm -hmm. he likes that kind of stuff too. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, what what about you, Benoit? What what, what did you feel about uh, Onward? Uh, it looks typically like your standard old Pixar film. Um, mm -hmm. Take all the mythical creatures and just trade them in for like their human counterparts or turn that dragon into a dog, which is what it was supposed to be. Right. And, or the fucking unicorns or like raccoons yeah, or some shit. Going, yeah. going through the garbage. Yeah. And this just seems like your like, standard fare, really. Mm -hmm. I think they're just setting it in their realm because... It's it's going to be a matter of how they play magic because it says in the beginning, you know, in times of old, the world was magical. 
Right. So mm-hmm. is it going to be kind of... It's not going to exactly be parallel to, say, our Middle Ages or the Dark Ages or anything like that, but how are they going to incorporate magic into the narrative without it seeming forced? Right. Uh, is what I'm curious about. However, it's Disney, so they can, you know, do whatever the hell they want in their films. It's probably going to work out well. I want to say, I kind of got, like, a lot of social vibes from it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, in... You know, probably the the previous generation before us, you know, mm. everything was great. We had a lot of... Yeah, you know what? That's a good point. No, go ahead. Go you ahead. You know, we had a lot of... Like um, the whole American dream thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, yeah. people were nicer. Two-car garage. People were like, hey, worked. you know, this yeah. is what you strive for. Mm. And All that, like, optimism. Yeah, 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 a lot of optimism and help your fellow neighbor. And you do something just to be nice. You don't do it just because you're going to get paid or you're going to get something out sure. of it. Or, and then... You know, as time has slowly progressed, we've kind of shifted from that to where we are currently, where we're more self-centric. Yeah, yeah, everybody's kind of like... Kind of looking out for their own, mm-hmm. and, and people, they don't free willingly give, you know, the respect to people that they used to. They now make them earn it, and everybody feels like they have to earn, uh, you know, others have to earn things from them as opposed to just kind of being nice about it yeah and, and so kind of like I, that that sense of adventure yeah, and yeah, exploration yeah. is gone because like there was a time where you know especially you know in our country like we strove to be the best right you know like we we wanted to you know have the highest skyscrapers and you know the best you know economy and and we you know the race to the moon and all that kind of stuff and we've kind of lost that sense of like adventure and prosperity and now we've become complacent with everything because mm-hmm. i, I kind of felt like you know Especially because they set it in, like, this kind of suburban town where, sure. you know, everybody's houses pretty much look the same. Everything's really monotonous. You know, so, he's, like, on his little cell phone mm-hmm. or Game Boy or whatever. So when he said that um, the world was once magical, that's kind of what I... Yeah. That's kind of the that, vibe that's I got. Point. That's a good point. Like, this cheery, happy, bright, magical, everything's all sunshine and roses, mm-hmm. you know. People believe in unicorns and Santa Claus and sure. Easter Bunny, whatever. You know, these these elves and whatnot. If you looked at a seven-year-old today and you're like, I want to, you know, clean your room so we get money for the tooth fairy, they're going to look at you Sorry, like... Sorry, fuck you, Dad. I'm flossing the forest night. <laughs> right, right. I mean, and that's really how yeah, it would yeah. go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean... I don't know. I think this movie's kind of, kind of shedding a light on some of that. Yeah, no. I mean, and, and I know some people maybe listen. It's like you got all that from like a minute and a half trailer, and it's I, like I really did. It's like no, really no, no. Did. But but I get where you're coming from because I do feel like the story will have some kind of commentary on what we've kind of lost as a society, mm-hmm. and because we've become so individualist and complacent and everything's just so like whatever mm-hmm. like there is no mystery to anything anymore there is no sense of adventure anymore because right. it's like oh we're going on an adventure he's like man motherfucker we going to the grocery store like what is you even talking about like you know like the the one brother is like very still kind of almost na- naively optimistic about you know adventuring and you know magic and all this right. other kind of shit and the other brothers just go like man like come on like we just doing a thing so, yeah, I, I, I can see that. I, and, I mean, we could be way off base here because I had a super convoluted-ass theory about uh, the Us movie, and I was way off. <laughs> and but, see, that's kind of what got me, like, I don't know if that's what got me thinking this deeply about it. Sure. But when we watched Get Out, I, there was so much that I it mm. went over my head. Right, right. And even with Us, I caught on to more, but mm-hmm. it still went over my head. Mm-hmm. And I think subconsciously somewhere I heard you in the back of my head, like, this this is more than what it seems. Yeah, no, no. And and because, you know, we started off talking about how they do have a lot of messages in their movies and stuff. So I think it will have something to do with, you know, trying to rekindle that sense of adventure and mystery and progress. And also because it is called Onward and it's about them trying to, you know, reconnect with their dead father who sure. they never knew, you know, that acceptance of moving on and you know passing of um um someone close to you yeah yeah you know and 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 learning to deal with that and loss and stuff Mm -hmm. like that so i I think there will be a few different themes that they'll be playing with but again we have no idea at this point this is like a teaser of a teaser trailer so we will see what happens one thing i want to say though before we go hopefully this is funny because 
Chris Pratt and Tom Holland's interactions together in Infinity War was like one of the funniest things in that whole movie. Mm-hmm. Like the scene where he's talking about you had a dance off. He was like, you mean like Footloose? He's like, yes, exactly like Footloose. He's like, is it still the greatest movie of all time? He's like, it never was. <laughs> like them talking to each other was like the funniest part of that movie. So to get them in a movie just to themselves, I'm like, I would watch them to just go back and forth in anything. So, I, I'm with you on that. I think yeah. that'd be pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, many of the lines recorded for the film were done separately in, in sound studios or booths, but there were actually quite a bit, of, uh, quite a few times where Tom Holland and Chris Pratt actually read their lines together. So there's a lot more of that chemistry that you're probably going to get in yes. the film with yes. them. And, and, and I, I prefer that because I've watched a lot of anime and stuff, and I know that, you know, a lot of times it's hard, or just animated movies in general, sure. or even CG stuff, where a lot of times it's hard to get, especially when it's big name actors, to mm-hmm. get them all in the same room together. And I feel like it's something's lost there. Sometimes, yeah. Even when they're reading against someone else, it's like, if you have a good chemistry with another person, when they're there in person for you to read lines off of, I think that makes it a lot better. As opposed to like, okay, you read your part and then I'll read my part over here and then we'll record it separately or there'll be playback or whatever. You will just read their line and respond to that. I think something gets lost there. Yeah. So it's it's good to know that at least for part of it that they were actually able to interact directly with each other and not just be reading off a script and just going like, yep, and then Tom says this and then Chris says this and then you respond to that. So, yeah. All right, Benoit, when, when's this one uh, coming out? When are we going to see Onward? Next year, it is currently scheduled for March 6th, 2020. Holy shit, they put this trailer out early. Wow. That is crazy. Yeah, man. Damn, shit. You would have thought this was a Star Wars movie as early as they put this teaser trailer out. Jeez. Well, look how early we got the Frozen trailer. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's Frozen, though. You know, this Frozen is, a, is not that good. Okay. No, but still, but it's a known money-making property. This is a brand new IP that no one's ever heard of that has no kind of built-in fan base. So for them to announce it this soon, yeah. they must have a lot of confidence in this because I'm like, that's really far out to be. I mean, because at that point, the movie's not even done. No. Like, they're still animating shit. They can still go in and change a bunch of shit script, script-wise. So... Yeah, that's really far out. So, okay. All right. I like it. Well, that gives me hope then. That, that gives me hope that, that they have confidence in what they're doing with this one. Because if they're willing to put it out that soon, then they must believe in the project. Okay. All right. Onward. I mean, moving on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The American dream unrealized. The afterlife. Economic and cultural anxiety. Acceptance of mortality societal complacency, and the pitfalls of individualism. You got all that from a trailer that has unicorns eating out of a trash can. I know that there's something so special about your and me, babe. You got me, you got me, you got me feeling fine. So just say the words cause you know what it means to me, babe. When you get me, you get me, you get me feeling right. I did not realize until watching this, but I really love racing movies. You just now figuring this out? Yes. Okay. From oh my god, from you're late to the party. From Rush. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll even throw the Fast and Furious movies in there. Back when they were about the racing. original three. Okay. Two. Back when they were still about racing. Yeah. Um. Uh. Days of Thunder. Uh huh. Um. Driven. Uh huh. Um. Talladega Nights. Mm. Yeah, I'll throw that in there. Nope. I'll fucking Speed Racer. I'll throw that in there too. Speed Racer. Like, pretty much speed anything with, with cars going fast. I'm like, I actually really like that genre of movie, especially when it's like that, you know, documentary style, like based on a true story, you know, yeah. those kind of things. Because yeah, yeah. um, I believe um, Rush and this movie are like one of those based on a true mm-hmm. story racing stories. And I was like, you know what? I, 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 I feel like that that type of movie can be put into a genre to itself because I think that the racing movie genre is it, it's kind of that sports genre as well because, you know, you got your Remember the Titans yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But I think racing is kind of its own thing separate to that. I yeah. mean, at least in at least in my opinion, because you don't get a lot of those. Not as many as like the football and oh, basketball yeah, yeah. ones and stuff like that. You know, another good one. Um, it's called Eight. Okay. It's the story of Dale Earnhardt. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, that one's really good, too. 
Oh, okay. Okay. So, what about Cannonball Run? Yes, Cannonball, Cannonball Run. That, that was one. another one because I was looking up, like, um, you know, racing movies from the past. Sure. And I was like, oh, man, like, there's a few of these where I remember seeing parts of it, but not the whole way through. And Cannonball Run's one of them. Or I've seen a bit of it, but not the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I even would throw Death Race in there, and that's more like... That, I liked Death that's Race. That's almost like Twisted Metal, the movie, if anybody's yeah. ever played that I, game. I like that's Death Race. That's a Grindhouse film right there. Yeah, yeah. Death Race was pretty good. Even even the one with Jason Statham, like when they remade it, like I thought that one was pretty good too. There's another one. Yeah, yeah. There's there's one. Oh, Death prior. Race is a remake of the original Death Race uh, from what, like the seventies or something like that when that one came that out. That makes sense. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, I think I remember yeah. hearing that. Now that you say that. Yeah, but yeah, it, it's it's an older one. Um, that that being said though, uh, Mel, what did you think about Ford versus Ferrari? Um, the trailer was redeeming. At okay. first, I saw Christian Bale and immediately was like, "Are you freaking kidding me?" No, wait a minute. I know you don't like the Batman movies. He's in, I don't but like you don't like him. I don't like anything. What you, you don't like American Psycho, Equilibrium, him and Will Ferrell. I can't stand either one of them. Um, uh, uh, uh the Prestige. No. I don't like anything that they're in. American Psycho, come on. Yeah, I know. No. I, I, I'm like, that, he's great. His that movie. part in American Psycho was horrid. Okay. Horrid. Okay. You're okay. horrid. Okay. All I've right. been told that a few times. <laughs> but okay. All right. All right. So, so um, you got past your hate. I got Christian past Bale. the Christian Bale. They redeemed okay. it with, you know, I. Matt Damon. No, <laughs> no actually, with the Shelby uh, 6500. Okay. Okay. Um, That is my favorite car. Okay. Okay. That blue and silver Shelby Mustang. Okay. All right. Mm. All right. We're we going to need a sponge here on the podcast <laughs> soon. But, um, go ahead. Yeah. So Shelby Mustang is great. And so they redeemed it with that. And then they threw Matt Damon in there. That was even, you know, a good bonus too. I like Matt Damon. Um, he still got it, by the way. He definitely looks the same. And I am I think I'm with you. I I don't think I'm with you. I'm with you. I like the I like racing movies in general. Uh, you threw out Days of Thunder. That's one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. You threw out. Um, you first, don't even like Tom Cruise. Like first, that. I like a few Tom Cruise movies. Yeah, but I mean, in general, you don't. Seem I like that. '90s Tom Cruise. Yeah, okay, we'll go the there. best Tom Cruise. The best Tom Cruise. Like mid '80s, '90s, that chunk. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um, now you lost my train of thought. Yeah, risky business, Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah. I like Top Gun, Tom Cruise the best. Top Gun, Tom. Pretty much any time Tom Cruise is running, I'm good. Like so, I said, '80s yeah. to mid '90s. All right, all After right. Jerry Maguire, that was it. <laughs> I um, but you threw the Fast and the Furious in there, mm-hmm. uh, the early ones. Which oh yeah, those are the best. Yeah, I like the other ones, but the first two are my absolute favorites. Yeah, the first, the first Fast and Furious is actually not a bad movie. Mm-mm. Like just a movie on its own. Mm-hmm. Like forget all the, you know, silly shit they do in a later one. Yeah. But just as a movie, it's actually not that bad. The second one, it was kind of like a, almost a modern day. Um, uh, what's the movie with Keanu Reeves and uh, Patrick Swayze? Break, uh, point Break. Yeah, break, Point Break. Point, point, point Break. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, Point Break, yeah. It's, it, I was going to say it, and then I heard her say it, and it messed me up. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's almost a modern-day Point Break. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Until they made the remake of that, which was terrible. But anyway, continue. Anyway, I like the um, Need for Speed was another one that you didn't throw on there. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. I yeah. actually had the Shelby Mustang Did not in see it. that one, but. You would like it. Yeah, because um, that's the one with Oh Boy from uh, Breaking Bad in there, right? The, he's the main guy. Need for Speed. I don't know. It's, I feel like uh, it's got Remney Malik in it, and it's got um, Michael Keaton, and it's got uh, the kid, the young kid. I don't know if he's from Breaking Bad. I've never watched Breaking Bad, but he's a young kid, and he's been in a couple other things. Yes, Aaron Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he plays. Aaron yeah, Paul. He, yeah, he plays Jesse Pinkman in um, Breaking Bad. But oh, yes, okay, yeah. yeah. He's the science bitch. Yeah, that's that's Jesse. But oh, anyway, go ahead. Right. <laughs> Sounds like my kind of character. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh-huh. I mean, I like the racing. The racing genre is good, um, mm. and especially when it can tell a story. So yeah. All right, Benoit. Thoughts. Cars. <laughs> ben, are you not a car guy? I mean, I drive them. You're not a car guy. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? To be fair, though, I'm not either. 
I, I just I just like the genre. You could be a car guy though. Yeah, but I'm not a I'm not like I don't like NASCAR. Or no, no, no. I'm not I'm not talking shit. racing cars. Oh, I'm talking mean? cars, cars. Like now, this is based off a book though, so it makes me curious how true it's going to be to the source material and how accurate the book really is. Because I'm yeah. always curious about things like that when it comes to film adaptations. I didn't know this was a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it, it's, yeah, it, it it is about it really an actual yeah. Uh, well, thing I assumed that, happened, that yeah. it was about actual events but yeah. i didn't know that it was a book prior yeah what well, they do say yeah, because uh, i'm not it a was written big and came reader. out back in i think yeah. like 2010 mm-hmm. yeah go to hell ford fiari uh F- ford fiari guy fiari his brother no um, <laughs> go like hell ford f- f- Who's a why f- can't i talk you got me all fiari? fucked up with the breakpoint shit now um go like hell ford ferrari and their battle for speed and glory at Le Mans. yes yeah. yes okay yeah, which which um is a some kind of crazy ass like twenty four hour like fucking you know racing tournament. Which I was like, that's crazy. You need to watch Need for Speed. I guess so. Yeah. It explains all of this. Okay, all right. You need to play Need for Speed. I, I do, have. I do need love the speed. original games. Yes. But yeah, but but so I mean, just like, are you into like these kind of stories, or are you kind of like you know indifferent about it? Well, I like history, not necessarily specifics of of this nature, but mm-hmm. it it, it kind of interests me a little bit. Okay. And Matt Damon's, Christian Bale's hit or miss, but Matt Damon's a fucking amazing actor. Yes. And you can tell he puts a lot of passion into what he does. So that alone might be enough to make this film good and worth watching. Okay. See, I, I'm actually on the other end of the spectrum from you guys. I, I actually really like Christian Bale. Um... I don't necessarily love everything he's done, but as an actor, I think that he, I think that he's back to doing like character acting roles and not like, you know, um, where he's like the titular character. I like him being more of a supporting character and he gets to kind of just sink into, you know, his role because I think that he's at his best when he can just disappear into a character because he'll, he does just off of what he does to his body mm-hmm. from movie to movie, I I I am always impressed with like he. I it, will give him that he changes his physical appearance to fit. Oh yeah, he will he transform is. into like complete extremes. Like he will be a super anorexic or get overweight or super yeah. jacked. Like I still want to see him play Dick Cheney. Yes, I was gonna say. I'm like I've only caught a bit of it on TV, but from what I hear, Vice is a really good movie. He plays Dick Cheney. I in did that. see the preview for that, the mm-hmm. trailer, and that looked good. Even though I didn't know it was Christian Bale, and I found out it was Christian Bale, and I was like, okay, this I could probably support. Yeah, yeah, and then and then they, I think they did the perfect casting. I like W. I like Josh Brolin's take mm-hmm. of um. George W. Bush, but the fact that they got um shit, what's his name? Uh Sam Rockwell oh, yeah, to play yeah. George W. Bush. I was like, that is damn perfect casting. But anyway, that that aside, I, I, I think that Christian Bale works best when he is a supporting character more mm-hmm. so than the leading character. Because Terminator Salvation, I wasn't too hot of him on that. I liked him as Batman, but I mean again, I feel like that character you can pretty much put anybody in that and they can make it work for the most part um as long as the director can step in and be like hey you know right doing too much but um i i i like him better when he's a supporting character like american hustle and stuff like that where he's and even the prestige where he's one of the two main characters but he's not the main main character right he's not he's not the one they spend all the money on exactly exactly like but, they, they spend a good chunk but it wasn't all the money. Yeah, yeah, but no, the story looks interesting. I mean, you know, I I I like period pieces when it comes to the racing movies as well too, and you know, this whole them kind of being on like the the bleeding edge of technology mm-hmm. at the time and like really trying to push you know the sport forward. Oh, yeah. with this whole competition they were having with Ferrari, and so all that stuff looks good. Though my favorite part about this whole thing was the CEO of Ford. <laughs> At the end of the trailer, when he's in the car with Matt Damon, Lee, ah, Coke. yeah, yeah, when, when they're test driving, he's like, he's like, "Are you ready?" He's like, "I was born ready." He's like, "Punch it!" And then they pull off and they skirt to the end, and he pretty much like shits his pants at the end and starts like crying. Oh, that is like the best thing ever. I, I don't know. Like, it was oh. pretty good when the 
they were sitting around and the marketer's like, so how long do we got to make this car? A couple years? And he's like, 90 days. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He was like, how long did you tell him uh, it would take you to make this? And he's like, ah, 90 days. He's like, are you fucking crazy? Like, yeah. That, and that's what I said. Like, that whole thing of being on, like, the bleeding edge of technology mm-hmm. and going, like, okay, we're pushing what we know of about physics and, and, and you know, uh automotion and everything else to it's like absolute limit because we're trying to win a competition. Like those kind of stories really intrigue me because it's like, we make a lot of leaps and bounds in technology because people with a lot of money are just competitive and egotistical. (laughs) And it's not necessarily like for the betterment of man It's just for fucking bragging rights and whose dick is bigger. So stories like that always interest me because I'm like, you know, it's people will damn near kill themselves trying to do something that's never been done before just to say that they did it. And st- stories like that always fascinate me. And this did happen in the 60s while we were still racing Russia to get to the moon. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah. um, Yeah, everything about it, though, looks interesting. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, this one. Uh, when, when, when are we to expect Ford versus Ferrari? Well, initially it was scheduled to be out later this month. Uh, however, it got pushed back. It's now going to be released on November fifteenth, uh, shortly before Thanksgiving. That kind of makes sense. I yeah. it would be kind of a mistake to put this out in the middle of summer, especially when you got Aladdin that just came out, Lion King's coming out soon, mm-hmm. Spider Man's coming D- out. Yeah, I would say Disney's like mon- monopolized the summer. Yeah, it's like um, you don't if you want your movie to succeed. Uh, anything after August. Yeah. And plus two, I I feel like period piece, you know, based on a true story type movies don't do well in the summer anyway. No. Like everybody wants to see the big action. Yeah. Do it in the fall where it's closer to the holidays. Families are getting together. You, I think you can hit your demographic that you're shooting for more with something like this. So no, I, I feel like this is a good time of the year for this to come out. Okay. And with that, moving on. Michael Mann was originally going to direct the film with Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt starring in the film. There. That's three times we've brought up friend of the show, Tom fucking Cruise, on today's episode. Welcome to Benoit's Webbit Hole. It's where I, Benoit, give you a brief synopsis of random things I found interesting on the internet. Some of these things may be further elaborated on in future podcasts, but I'd recommend you dig deeper for yourself if you're interested. The views and opinions expressed in the Webbit Hole are those of Benoit's and Benoit's alone, and do not necessarily reflect the position of any member, affiliate, or future sponsor, despite us not having any of the One Giant Leap for Geeks podcast. Are you a fan of the Boondocks? Well, according to John Witherspoon, who played granddad Robert Jebediah Freeman, the show will be returning for a fifth season. It's currently in pre-production and would be making its fourth return as there had been at least a full year between its previous four seasons, respectively. For those unaware, the Boondocks debuted on Adult Swim in 2005, based off a comic strip by Aaron Magruder. Magruder was the executive producer for the first three seasons, though due to disagreements he was not a part of season four and will most likely not be a part of season five. Personally, I love the show and own the first two seasons on DVD and even a book full of the original comic strips. I highly recommend you watch it if you can. Bruce Campbell is one of the coolest actors of all time, believe it or not. Seriously. He's so cool that he's even going to be returning to television to host the revival of Ripley's Believe It or Not. Debuting this Sunday, June 9th on the Travel Channel at 9 p.m. Eastern, the hour-long series will be celebrating its 100th anniversary with Bruce at the helm, not just as host, but also as executive producer. Now, television wasn't around 100 years ago, so historically, Ripley's began as a newspaper panel that eventually wound up in books, museums, radio, and finally debuting on TV in the 40s. Ripley's Believe It or Not has not been on television here in the States since Superman himself, Dean Cain, hosted its most popular version in the early 2000s. The returning season is scheduled for a 10-episode run, but hopefully its ratings will justify it lasting longer. Have you ever rolled down the street smoking Indo, sipping on gin and juice? 
I sure hope not. Of course, our man Snoop rapped about that back in 94, but did you know he actually broke a Guinness World Record for it? Not drinking and driving, but mixing the largest cocktail of all time. Last year at the Bottle Rock Napa Valley Music Festival, alongside Warren G. and Top Chef winner Michael Votaggio, Snoop D.O.Double-G mixed a volume of 132 gallons from 180 bottles of gin, 154 bottles of apricot brandy, and 38 jugs of orange juice. Of course, that big-ass drink had to be garnished with a pineapple and a melon on a sword, because you gotta keep it classy, yo. Mother 3 may have eventually been released for the Game Boy Advance in Japan in 2006 and translated to English by fans in 2008, but it was initially meant for the Nintendo 64 and its 64DD add-on. You may wonder, what's 64DD? Them some big titties. I jest. It's a failed peripheral for the N64, but I digress. This is about Mother 3, the sequel to the retrospectively critically acclaimed SNES game Earthbound. New footage has recently surfaced online of the cancelled game from the Space World 1996 convention. According to Sitaru Iwata, 30% of the final product had been completed. Perhaps one day the partially completed prototype will be fully released for viewing, if not playing. Do you want to be the very best, like no one ever was, in bed? Apparently that's a thing not just reserved for the professionals in the porn industry. A few years ago, in the land down under, an Australian couple created a line of Pokemon dildos which would make any Pokemon master squirtle with joy. Multiple types have been created, inspired by the Generation 1 starters from the original games. There's Bulby, with a large seed tip making it very pleasurable to have. A Charmy, with a flared red tail that gives intense orgasms wherever it goes. A Squirty, with a grooved turtleneck on its back. And Peaky, a small electric type for those looking to shove Pikachu's tail up their ass. Now these aren't their only toys, as they're also fans of Game of Thrones and Sailor Moon with creations to match. And with that, I'm going to take a shower now. And now back to your regularly scheduled podcast. Did you seriously make a squirting pun about the Pokemon Squirtle? My god, I expect more from you. I don't know why. Yes, I do. It's that time again for America's number one show. Dumb Shit of the Week! That's right. Dumb Shit of the Week is the show where DJ Melly Mel finds dumb shit and we talk about it. Want your submission on the show? Find us on Twitter at GiantLeap, the number four geek, so you can email us at officialOGLFG at gmail.com. Now here's your host, DJ Melly Mel! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Alright, so typically dumb shit is something that I've been perusing on the internet and it just plops on my lap. Literally, because, you know, I most of the time have my phone in my lap. Or in my hand. Either or. You're Whatever. You're a lot of shit in your window right now. I just want to know, by saying plops on your lap, <laughs> I just want you to know that. Eh. <laughs> I'm used to it. <laughs> but this one, I mean, this is definitely classified as dumb shit, but mm-hmm. not necessarily the same line of dumb shit that we are used to. Okay. So... There's no Easter butts this week. Nothing crazy weird. Oh, yeah. You got to come hard. Francine was not impressed with you. No, I know. So, so you got to come she hard. She was dogging me hard. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm getting this from krcrtv.com, which is a news station, sister local for ABC. Okay. And it says, student put in detention for sharing lunch. Okay. In California... An 8th grade student at an elementary school got a detention slip for sharing his school-prepared lunch on Tuesday. I'm going to refrain from naming the kid's name because he's a minor. Sure. Um, he shared his, I'm surprised that they did. He shared his chicken burrito with a friend who didn't like the cheese sandwich that he was given for, from the cafeteria. The kid didn't see anything wrong with sharing his food. He says, 
It seemed like he couldn't get a normal lunch for whatever reason. Probably no, not enough money. So I just wanted to give mine to him because I wasn't really that hungry that day and it was just going to go to the garbage anyways. The school district, which is also named and I'm not going to name, has regulations that prohibit students from sharing meals. The policies are set by the district so that students who have allergies don't eat something accidentally given to them. In theory, okay. Mm -hmm. In practice, ridiculous. Yeah. The superintendent of the school district says that hygiene issues also come into play when banning students from sharing meals. We have a policy that prohibits students from exchanging meals. Of course, students are concerned about students not having enough to eat. We would definitely want to consider that. But because of safety and liability, we cannot actually allow students to exchange meals. Now, the kid who shared his lunch, her, his mother come on and said that her son did the right thing by sharing the lunch with somebody who was less fortunate. And she also believes that it isn't up to the school to discipline her son for having good manners. She said, by all means, the school can teach them math and arithmetic, physical education, but when it comes to morals and manners and compassion, I believe that starts at home and it's not always something we are taught. So the kid says he would go and definitely share his lunch again with a friend if the friend wanted it. So it wasn't like some random kid. It was his friend. And they have a picture of the actual detention slip that the kid got. Mm -hmm. And it has his name and who issued it, what grade he's in. And it says other for reason of explanation. Kid come through the line, got a lunch while at the table, gave it to another student. And the policy is that there is no sharing food, which he is fully aware of. Mm Mm-hmm. As somebody who Fuck the policy. As somebody who is a parent, Mike, mm. what is your take on this? <sighs> okay, so I I, I want to say up front that I, I do understand the school's policy or the district's policy regarding allergies. I, I do understand that because there is no way to know how the food was prepared at home for the child, if it was contaminated with something else. You it know. wasn't prepared at home. It was prepared in the cafeteria. The the burrito that he gave? Yes. It was from the cafeteria. Oh, okay. See, I thought he brought it from home. No, it was cafe- It was a lunch tray that he got. He went through the cafeteria Okay, okay, because I know the one kid the didn't one want kid his The one kid had a lunch. cheese sandwich also given to him by the cafeteria. Oh, so then yeah, then I call typically, bullshit. Typically when that situation arises... If you can't afford your lunch and yeah. you're past the like the one or two that they let you charge with no money, yeah, they don't let you get real food. You either get a peanut butter and jelly or a cheese sandwich yeah. and like an apple or something. Yeah. Because they can't legally let you not eat anything. Yeah, but yeah. But yeah. they don't have to give you what everybody else <clears throat> is having. No, no, okay, okay, okay. Now now that gives me some clarification. And yeah, I, I definitely call bullshit on that because I'm like if if the the issue is to be worried about allergens or different things like that or whatever. It's like, well, then how would you even know? Because I'm sure they don't ask the kids when they come up there, are you allergic to this, that, this, that, right, and the other right, right. when they give them the, the exactly. trays of food? So it's like, well, I don't understand. It's it, it, If anything, now it sounds more like it's a bullshit excuse to justify – not giving kids who they can't get any kind of monetary gain from mm-hmm. their parents the same food that the kids who are paying for it are getting. Mm-hmm. It's it's to keep those, you know, classes, I guess, if you will, separate. And because I guess they could say, well, if we let, you know, little Timmy share his lunch with such and such, then, you know, we'll have a problem with every kid who can't afford lunch at all wanting to get the same kind of lunch that the kids who actually can pay for portions of it, the same thing. So yeah, you know, I, I call bullshit. What about you, Ben? Fuck that rule. Yeah. Okay. It is a way to prevent poor kids from getting food. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not about allergies whatsoever. What, what kind of sandwich did that kid he get? He got a cheese sandwich. And what kind of burrito did the other kid get? Uh, some kind of chicken burrito. Yeah. It's like, what is he allergic chicken. to chicken? 
<laughs> so I, it's not gonna be. It's not gonna be gluten. It's not gonna be dairy. It's not gonna be chicken. Yeah. I mean, I assume if it's a chicken burrito, it probably had cheese, maybe some lettuce, some chicken. Yeah, but nothing in that. that it's that a school would be, lunch, yeah. and then it's wrapped in a tortilla. And this, and this was an eighth grader. An eighth grader, yeah. So these kids were 12, 13, 14, so more in that age mm-hmm. range, right? Yeah. Yep. And they were friends. Yep. Yeah. And so they probably are well aware of what each other's friends can't eat, and the kid probably wouldn't have chosen to eat something if he knew he'd be allergic to yeah. it. My thought is, is you already gave the kid a cheese sandwich. So if he's allergic to cheese or dairy... Right, but at best he's lactose it? intolerant. Okay. You know, he's not going to like... You know, going to hide, right, and right, right. Clothes up well, or what's, something. The, yeah. what's the difference between a cheese from a cheese sandwich and a cheese from a cheese burrito? No, it, there is no difference. And it, if it, it's, it's a gluten allergy, it's all probably fake cheese anyway. So it's exactly, not, yeah. Right. Okay. It's not even probably dairy based. Right, yeah. right, right. So if it's a gluten allergy, you already gave the kid bread. Yep. Mm-hmm. So what's the difference between a tortilla and bread? But see, they both still have gluten in them. You're making a legitimate argument to a illegitimate problem because if that was really what the problem was, then they would just change it. Oh, I that's know, not what the problem. But is. that's their policy. It's not a problem of cross contamination. So no. and this is no. this is not a policy somebody uh, somebody enacted just to you know protect people from feud. This is something that happened. Yeah. Something happened somewhere, and this is them going overboard on yeah. it. And when you put it into practice, it's fucking over kids who can't afford exactly. lunch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's and it's not to keep the kids from eating. It's just that it's to keep them from getting the same quality of food yeah. that they can get you from kids who pay, pay for it. You didn't pay for your yeah. lunch, so you get... Because then you can start making an argument of, well, why are we paying for any of this if the kids who can't afford it at all are eating the same thing that my kid had to pay exactly. some kind of money for? Exactly. So either they but... should make lunches free for all the kids mm-hmm. because, you know, parents and... Non-parents pay enough tax dollars to schools that you can feed both Timmy and Jimmy a freaking chicken burrito. Mm-hmm. I agree. But no, go- now, on the flip side of this argument, though, I'm sure there are going to be those gung-ho parents that if some kid goes to school and shares something with their kid and that kid has a, a reaction to it, they're going to shoot the school and say, how come the school didn't prevent my, this kid from, you know? Yeah, because that's what I was thinking initially was that it was something that was brought from home. See, even, then I was like, okay, I c- kind of understand that. But this is just in the school system. Even in that kind of situation, system. if I were a parent mm. and something was given to my kid because they didn't, why as a parent didn't I make it known what my kid's allergy was? True, but there's no well, way no, to stop. No. Even if the school knows, yeah, there's no way is to, the school going to be able to stop a kid from giving another kid right, something? Right, right. And no, plus, there's no way to know what the parent did who prepared their meal. That's what I was saying in the beginning. Because it's like, I don't know if you use that same knife on something else that, you know, or the container or the plate that it was on, whatever. There's no way to control the cross-contamination from a third-party source. Exactly. So I get that. But you can't control that kind of contamination in life either. True, you but 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 in a, a restaurant, who... but in a controlled setting, though, it's like if if they're sure, in a they're, laboratory, yeah, but but I mean, like in in a situation where it's like something's prepared in a restaurant. If you have an allergy to something and you're ordering something in a restaurant, they will prepare your food with separate utensils and not in always. a separate area. Well, they are supposed they're to. supposed to, yeah, but not always. To. Same as if you go to a fish market or right, meat market. Right. If but but to be fair though, I think we're getting lost in the minutia of the allergy thing. It ain't about that. Like it, it ain't no, about that. No, it's at all. not about the that's, allergies that's their, at all. That's their excuse. This is more. This has yeah. happened more and more often. I've seen stories about people who like forget to send their lunch money or forget to send their kids with lunch money, or they don't have the extra money yeah. to pay a buck fifty for lunch for their kid. Yeah, or whatever the case is. You know, you're just above that line where you can't get free lunch. Yeah, yeah, but you're you just can't, above the poverty line. But, but you're not enough to where. Yeah, you actually could pay for lunch right, or right. bring. Yeah, and this is happening more and more. And oh, yeah. I've even seen stories of school cafeterias. They're like, oh, well, you can work for your food, and they give them a rag and make them wipe tables. Yeah, and it's like, what the fuck is this prison? Like, what? Like, <laughs> I again. And there's even been some stories about lunch. People, for lack of a better mm-hmm. term, losing their jobs because they're not going to let a kid yep. eat. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I would be one of those people. Yep. Or even getting in trouble for paying for the kid to eat the I themselves. would be one of those people yep. as well. Yep. Because I'll be damned if these kids go to school eight hours a day at least mm-hmm. 
most kids go, they go from like 7.30 until 3 or 4. Sure, yeah. So, if I had to be up at 7.30, Mm -hmm. and I had to function all day, as I do for my job. Yeah. And I don't get home, and or I don't get out of school until 4, 3.34. And depending on if you ride the bus, if you ride the bus, you're going to tack on another hour before you get home. Mm -hmm. So you're talking 10 hours and no food. No. Yeah. I refuse. There are days when I go to work and I go to work at 9 o'clock in the morning and I don't have any money on me. My whole office of people is working and they're like, oh, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. They all get food Mm -hmm. and I'm sitting there with nothing. At 5 o'clock when I leave, I am stuck. Starving. So I can't imagine being 10, 12, 14, whatever, and having to actually go to school and be hungry all day. Oh, yeah. I, I think this is the dumbest dumb shit that we found. Yeah. And, and I mean, and we as a country, we, we pay enough in taxes. Exactly. And we have enough income coming into the government to where this should not be a problem. It's just there are people... In the government, and there are um, uh, what what is the word that I want to use? Uh, people who like uh advocate for stuff uh to government officials who aren't actually a part of the government. Yeah, lobbyists. Yes, who make it a point to try and keep schools from getting more money because of whatever their reason, either being conservative fiscally or if they think the money can be spent better somewhere oh, yeah. else. It, it's a bunch of politicized bullshit. Mm-hmm. But we spend so much money on. You know, um, contracts to, um, um, you know, companies to build weapons and the over, war. Yeah, the overwhelming majority of our tax revenue goes into military yes. spending. And, and, and not specifically spending for people overseas, spending into weapons yeah, development. Yeah, weapons development, um, just maintaining bases all across the world, um, giving money to, you know, other countries to either topple or, you know, prop up different governments and things like that. And I mean, it, it's a whole rabbit hole of shit that we spend money on. But whenever it comes to social services or education mm-hmm. or health care, we always lacking. suddenly get real tight in the coin purse. But we will spend well, literally yeah. trillions of dollars on everything else. I think it's funny that we always cut from that one section, and that's the one section that needs our help the most. Well, that's because they've reframed that argument to make those things look like entitlements. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, that's not an entitlement. No. It's like, we are the richest, most powerful country in the world. There is no reason that there should be, you know, a lunch pro... There is no reason that there should not be a universal lunch program. There is no reason that there should we should not have universal health care, mm-hmm. universal um education from, you know... Uh, grade school up to higher education like there is no we have enough money to fund all of these things that's what i mean why is it the social programs that keep getting caught cut well it's because the people who have to you know use those social programs be it fully or partially uh, are demonized right and and, 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 if you don't have the money it's it's either it's your fault if you don't have the money you're either dumb right or lazy either educated but but that's the thing that makes me so angry is yeah. because they, they frame it as an entitlement. But that's saying that you are being given something that you did not earn. Mm-hmm. We pay into these social mm-hmm. programs. Mm-hmm. This is not just the government saying, here's a handout. Right. Our taxes pay into Social Security and public education and all this other kind of shit. We earned these things. These are not entitlements. That's an investment on our part as a taxpayer. So for you to say, oh, well, we got to cut you know, money somewhere, so we're going to cut it from the shit that you have paid into. So we're going to take the money that we owe you to pay into this program mm-hmm. and go s- shuffle it off to some other shit that literally does not affect the average American in any way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. And I know we're getting really, really, really down. I'm sorry, guys. I'm really, I so, really so, didn't mean to take but, um, dumb shit this deep, but I saw that you brought up kids. That kind of I know. Sense, you know? I know. Yeah. yeah it's, and, it, we we last thing I want to say on this subject because I know you said you had one more thing you wanted to bring up on uh, on discussion, but we as a country, for some reason, I don't know if it's that the majority of us feel this way. And this is how we vote or if the minority kind of has the control because we're so disillusioned. But for whatever reason, we need to stop focusing our income and our money on spending it towards our military to protect us and instead focus that money on ourselves so that we have something worth protecting. That is an excellent point. All right. That is an excellent point. 
Ben, not so not many things day, I will agree with you on. That is. is one of them. Yeah. Doesn't matter how strong our military is if we got nothing at home worth saving. Yeah. You're gonna protect an empty we fort. We need to invest in ourselves, mm-hmm. and that means the children. That means the infrastructure, their education, our health, mental and physical. But that's all I gotta say about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Sorry, guys. Dumb shit went a little deep this week, but I can usually gloss over some of these things when it comes to treating our kids like they're less than anything mm. for just being kids. Yeah. No. I grew Not up cool. always having free lunch. I always had free and lunch. And 20 plus years ago, my mother worked at an elementary school where she was actually the cashier and there were times where kids did not have money and she paid out of her pocket so they could eat. Oh yeah. I've been through this. I yep. understand this. This needs to yep. stop. <clears throat> and there's no reason for it because we have the ability to make sure that every kid is fed a quality lunch and they're not eating fucking cheese sandwiches and I shit. I say sometimes this is all that they get. Yeah. Like I know people who have sent their children to school not to go get an education, not so that they can go be active and play with other kids. They have sent their kids to school because it is the only meal that they will get that day. Yeah. So, public service announcement this week. It's not all about you. Focus yourself on maybe helping out somebody else because somebody's going to need it. And one day you're going to need it and nobody's going to come help you. That's it. If you want to debate this, you want to, you know, hear me expand on this more, you can hit me up on Twitter at Froggy Beaver, or you can email the show at officialoglfg at gmail.com. So, yeah. No, no stay smart, kids. Stay kind, kids. <laughs> okay, I'm still not happy with your dumb shit choices for the last two weeks. But this is about tiny humans. And I have a soft spot for them, so I'll let this slide for now. So Apple has made an announcement that has honestly I'm shocked to see that this did not happen sooner but I'm going to give you the info dump and then we will dissect this and discuss Um, getting this from cbsnews.com Apple confirmed the end of an era on Monday no more iTunes the music store available for years on iPods and iPhones has been overshadowed by streaming services like the company's own Apple Music and it will soon be phased out Apple announced at its Worldwide Developers Conference on Monday, the new Mac OS Catalina will have an iTunes replacement simply called Music. CNET reports a new podcast and Apple TV app with updated features will also be rolled out. This change had been the subject of speculation in the days leading up to WWDC, with Bloomberg reporting that iTunes was expected to be replaced by separate apps for music, TV, and podcasts. The change was officially announced by Apple CEO Tim Cook and other company executives at the conference keynote in San Jose, California. Customers love iTunes and everything it can do, but if there's one thing we hear over and over is, can iTunes do even more? Said Craig (laughs) Ferdigihi? Apple. Yeah, sure. Apple's senior vice president of software engineering. Uh, several internet sleuths reported spotting clues about the change in advance. Reddit users noticed all of the posts on the iTunes Instagram and Facebook pages have been deleted. Other Apple fans noticed the company moved the content on the iTunes Facebook page to the Apple TV page. And possible leaked images of the three new apps to replace iTunes were revealed on a Mac blog. As streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music compete for customers, pay-per-song platforms like iTunes seem to be falling by the wayside. An Apple Music subscription currently allows customers to listen to songs they previously bought and downloaded from iTunes. It is unclear what will happen to individual songs bought on iTunes if the service does go dark. Now, to the point of this, um, this makes sense. Um, because Apple sent me an email months ago mm-hmm. asking um, like podcasters to use a different hashtag when talking about 
your podcast on iTunes. So they asked us to use the hashtag uh, Apple Podcasts okay. as opposed to using iTunes. And I thought that was weird because I was like, well, why not? Because, I mean, people are going to go to iTunes you know, before they'll specifically search for Apple Podcasts. You know, maybe what I mean? not now. Now that they're switching, exactly. And and so this was kind of to start to get people used to seeing that and get them away from iTunes because this was honestly bound to happen. Uh, it's it's a antiquated service. Pay per songs, you know, applications were always going to lose out to a subscription based, you know, music streaming service. Why would I pay? Because I believe it was it started off at ninety nine cents a song, and now it's at an average of a dollar twenty nine a song. Why would I pay per song when, for one, you can get a lot of places for free? But shh, <laughs> and two, I can go get on something like Spotify or something like that, get a premium service, pay you know a monthly subscription, and listen to as many songs as I want to. Yeah, you may have to listen to some ads here and there, but for the most part. Once you know, it's like your Netflix. Even if you have Pandora and Spotify, both of those offer free, um, yeah, memberships. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to pay anything for them. You listen to an ad, and then you get up to ten thousand songs. Yeah, yeah, that you can save, and then you can download another ten thousand. And and that's the thing. It's like there, there, it was never going to be a business model that was going to last forever because honestly i'm surprised it lasts as long as it did because i mean itunes has been around for i want to say almost 20 years god has it been uh, that itunes long? came out in 2001 yeah god yeah. is it that long yeah so 18 years yeah yeah i feel so old yeah so i mean now now benoit i'm curious like what are your thoughts about this like is it are you happy to see itunes go are you surprised like me that this kind of stuck around as long as it did and i mean do you think that the future of Pretty much everything is just going to become streaming. Uh, well, the answer to that latter question, um, it could eventually wind up that way. Yes. Um, as for what do I think about this about iTunes? I, I have no horse in the race. I did use iTunes back when I had an iPod, and I oh, had sure. it for about a decade. But I never bought anything like you said. Uh, at that point, I was either ripping stuff off of CDs, um, legally owned, or like you know, borrowed from the library CDs or yeah, Torrents and Morpheus like P2P software. And otherwise is how I got most of my music. And I liked how I was able to put everything in iTunes, you know, movies, music, podcasts, what have you books, shit like that. But, um, we are, we are unfortunately, and I think we kind of hit on this when it came to gaming, we are unfortunately slowly moving towards a future where everything is just available you know, at your fingertips via streaming. And I don't like that because I am still a huge fan of the physical format. And on top of that, uh, the physical format, depending on what you get, typically all that stuff is protected under the copyright act. So you mm-hmm. can just, you know, use it at your disposal. When everything comes streaming like this or everything ends up getting saved into the cloud, uh, you're no longer really owning anything that you pay for. You're yep. paying simply for a right to hear it. And it's like, I still listen to the radio in my car. Me too. What What's going to happen to that? Because inevitably, like, sure you have Pandora and Spotify where you can listen to music for free. You know, as long as you hear ads every now and again, that's the same basic principle as the radio, uh, your radio in your car. Mm-hmm. But <sighs> you're you're basically just leasing the access to the music. Is yeah, basically all and... it is at that point. I don't think I mind it right now, but I am cynical of where this could eventually be. Like I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it doesn't kind of fall the way of cable television, mm-hmm. where to access content is going to become uh, more limited and more expensive. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, iTunes has been around for years. Um, does anybody still have a Zoom? Anybody have any? <laughs> I remember like, the Zoom. Yeah. Does that count? I never could afford one, but I remember it. Yeah. What was the other thing you said, Ben? I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm just kind of, I'm going to go off on a tangent if I keep talking. But... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but no, I, 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 I am of the same mind as you. I, I, I was very resistant to cloud-based services and streaming services initially, but the more it's in front of me and the more I use it, the more I'm becoming comfortable with it. I, I do, I, I am it's still in your same boat of, 
when it comes to games, I'm still hesitant about that because I do sometimes go back and play older games. Not as much as I used to because I can barely keep up with new games, let alone go back and play something that came out 5, 10, 15 years ago. But that being said, I... I feel like within the next five to ten years that pretty much everything is just going to be cloud-based streaming, everything, like movies, games. I mean, the only holdouts are still, you know, like if you still have a smaller town, like, you know, where I live, where you still have a a um, video rental place, which is basically a streaming service pretty much, you know, but you, you, you pay per thing, but you don't actually own anything. And... You know, video games, hard copies, they won't go away completely, I don't think, in the next five to ten years, but eventually they will, and everything will just be digital. See, I'm not... Well, that worries me, because yeah. uh, are you ever going to have access to these actual files with music on them to burn for your own external use? Or is everything going to be in a simple format based only for whatever medium you're listening to, be it Spotify, right. Pandora, etc.? Are you ever going to actually be able to get hands-on with music anymore? Because that worries me. At some point, is that going to go to realm of like what Google is doing with Stadia, mm-hmm. where you're no longer going to be able to physically have games and play them at your leisure? And I know they say, yeah, you'll be able to play it at your leisure when you see it on the TV. But I mean, no. Do I have to be hooked up to your service to use it? I want to be able to play things in my own player at my own time, right. whenever I want. Right. And it's and not necessarily always have to be online, connected to your service at all exactly. times. Yeah. And some people were predicting this kind of thing back when Napster came out in like 99, 2000. And I kind of see where they were coming from with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even prior to, like when I had iTunes, uh, iTunes only uh, read the MP3 files off of my actual hard drive so I could still burn them Right. To my own little mixtapes whenever I wanted to. Mm-hmm. It, it, I don't know how the system is now if you can still do that or if you're even going to be able to do that in the future. Like, right. are we no longer going to own any of the music that we purchase at all? Or are we, is it going to go the way of games where you're really just buying the license to play the game? Because I never want to lose that physical format because there's going to be so much art that gets lost into the cloud and into the record companies and into like the Apple's and the Googles, yeah. and whatever. Well, yeah, like... I don't like where that's going. Me well, either. Like, like, for a perfect example, um, right now, you know, we talked about how Telltale Games went out of business, and one of the games that they made was Minecraft Story Mode. Right. And that game is... If you don't have a physical copy of that, that game is about to disappear because they're taking it off of Steam and stuff like that, so they don't make physical copies of this game anymore, and if you didn't already physically have one from prior the game will just be lost to time now because there is no platform that they're selling it on anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it, it's happened before. And I mean, it happens now. And I mean, because there's a whole like, you know, community of people who do emulators and stuff like that to like try and, uh, archive old games and like keep them alive. But I don't know how that will work in the future when you never have access to the source from the beginning. Right. So it's like, no, you're just borrowing it, but not even that, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's more like you're going to your friend's house and playing their game, but you can never take it back home with you. So it's like, you can and only you play pay it them for it. Right, right. Exactly. You, you can only play it when you're here using my PlayStation at my house. But if you ever go anywhere else and try to do it somewhere else, you can't access it anymore. So yeah, I, I definitely understand your concerns. Now, if it was a universal platform, then it wouldn't bother me so much. But because every company wants to have their own version of Netflix, Mm -hmm. that's what scares me because it's like, there's going to be things that come out on certain services that won't be cross platform or cross whatever that new movies. Yeah. That, that you can't access unless you deal with them and God forbid these things go under, you know, or get canceled or absorbed or something like that. Then it's just gone forever then. Yep. So, yeah. I mean, you can't even buy a disc right now for a Windows OS. Nope. Nope. You have to get it digitally. Yep. And because you got to get it digitally, it's always going to have access to their home server where you're only going to be able to upload it to, say, one computer or, God forbid, your PC tanks. Mm-hmm. Once you upload that one copy, that's it. You can't get a new PC and then re-upload the OS. And I, I'm worried that eventually music... Like, it sucks for movies and games, but I'm a much bigger fan of music, so I... 
I don't like the idea that that could happen with music as well. Oh, I agree. There's no way. Mm-hmm. There's no way you're ever going to be able to uh, forever keep your digital copies of anything. No. There's always that chance they're going to be gone. Mind you, there's always that chance if you own a CD or a cassette, it's going to break. But at least when you have that physical format, it's less durable physically, but infinitely available to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've had like I've had my phone update. Like, just do normal updates, and I've lost music. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I bought a song on Apple Music. No, on Amazon Music. Like, paid the dollar fifty for it, because it was a song that I really wanted, and I couldn't find it other places. And I bought the song, and then downloaded it to the phone. My phone updated, and my song disappeared. I had to email Amazon. Thankfully, I'm a screenshot queen, and I screenshot the receipt of the Apple Music cause, or the Amazon Music because I had never, I'd never bought a song online before, mm-hmm. and I had the the confirmation number. I had proof that I bought it, and I wrote Amazon an email, and I said, "Look, this is what happened. I bought your song. I didn't download it. Here's my confirmation. I put it on my phone. My phone reset." I would like my song back without having to pay another dollar fifty. Oh, good for you! They gave a shit. Not all companies will do that. Yeah, I I think if it were anybody other than Amazon, they probably wouldn't have. Like if it, it was iTunes or if it was, it was like gotcha, bitch. Whatever. <laughs> I, I think it's if it was anybody other than Amazon, because Amazon's really good about their customer customers coming back, mm-hmm. and so I was thankful enough that I got it. And then I backed it up in a file. Yeah. So. But my, my, my main concern, just because, you know, I was never an a Apple user. So, I mean, this doesn't def- affect me personally. But as far as the podcast goes, I'm really curious to how this will play out once they have a separate service for podcasts for Apple. As opposed to lumping it all into iTunes. Mm-hmm. Because iTunes is hands down the biggest platform for podcasts. Oh, yeah. Our downloads, 90% damn near come from iTunes. So I'm really curious to what that will do to podcasters download numbers and accessibility and stuff, because are people going to jump on the Apple podcast bandwagon avid podcast listeners who are sure. Apple users? Sure. Yes, they will. But a lot of people who discover podcasts who maybe have never even listened to a podcast before come across it because of iTunes. So when that service is gone, my concern is, will they be converted to a different platform to listen to these things when it's all, right now, lumped into one thing? I was say, Ben, you're not an Apple Apple person, are you? No. Yeah. Okay. I don't think any of us here are. See, yeah. none, of, well, none of us are, have to deal with this because we're all Android people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I... I know people that are, I know a lot of people that are, oh, let's go Apple. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to look at them when this happens and be like, sorry, bro. Yeah. And and again, like I said. And like, I mean, like you said, it, it's affecting the podcast. But Yeah, yeah. Like avid podcast listeners, I'm sure will seek out Apple Podcasts and will download it and listen, you know, to podcasts regularly like they always did. But the people who are potential listeners or you know, super casual listeners, I worry that they just won't even bother once it's not right there all lumped together for them to access. So, right. I mean, we'll see. But anyway. Well, oh, well I used ahead. to have an iPod. Well, I, I just want to say I had an iPod for about 10 years from like 2006 to like 2015. It surprisingly lasted a very long time. Mm-hmm. But my hard drive, which had all the MP3s on it, and mind you, there was more music on my computer than I could even fit on my iPod at the time. Oh, yeah. But when my hard drive died, I lost all that music. Mm-hmm. I didn't have any physical backup or any other cloud backup at the time because that really wasn't available then or anything of the sort. And so I, I've i lost probably a good 10,000 songs. Jesus. Uh, full albums, uh, stuff like that that I don't have any backups of, any physical manifestations of. And so I'm still kind of sad about that. And I don't want anybody else to have to go through that or end up put in a position where they're no longer going to at least have access to be able to make physical copies of their digital music. Yep. 
Yeah, it's, that's it's, all I wanted to say. I probably said that already, and it's probably redundant. But I just wanted to <laughs> that. no, no. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out in the future. But until that point, we will see what happens. All right, moving on. You need to get with the times. Everything will be in the cloud. Everything will be streaming. You own nothing. You possess nothing. You only can buy access. This includes your soul. I'm pissed. Okay, I am livid. As that you should be. is it. God damn it. I will put up with a lot of bullshit, okay? I will put up with Wall Street deregulation. I will put up with reduced funding for the Environmental Protection Agency. I will put up with mass deportation and building a wall. But once you start fucking with my video games, <laughs> then you have crossed the line. You have gone a step too far, sir. Now you playing, right? <laughs> no, no, this this is definitely definitely me being hyperbolic, but not completely. So I'm gonna give you the info dump and then we will discuss. So I'm getting this from Kotaku. Um during the nineteen eighties and nineteen nineties, Nintendo made his game consoles in Japan. Now they are made in China and could get more expensive for American consumers. Since late January of last year, the U.S. and China have been in a trade war. As the New York Times reports, the Trump administration has plans to tax all Chinese-made clothes and electronics imported into the U.S. <clears throat> Those taxes would be passed on to the consumer in the form of price hikes. What does that mean for Nintendo? As Nikkei notes, Trump's plan would see a 25% tax on Nintendo Switch in the U.S., where around 40% of all Switches are sold. This tax would lead to a more expensive product. Nintendo president uh, Shuntaru Furukawa is quoted as saying, The effect on business is huge, so we are closely watching what happens next. While the Nikkei article does not mention Nintendo's rivals, the Kyoto-based company would not be the only game hardware company impacted by the trade war. Now, as they alluded to in the article, um, it is not just Nintendo that outsources their um, production of their consoles to China. Mm -hmm. um, Sony mm -hmm. and Microsoft also do. And um, I guess the only person who might be safe is the Soulja Boy console, <laughs> which more than most likely that's probably made in China too. So he's probably ain't safe from this either. But what my problem is, is that, okay, to, just to, to put this into perspective, so a 25% tax hike, let's say the new Nintendo Switch comes out and it's $299, just to make it easy math, $300. That would make it jump to $375. Like, think about that. That is a 25% increase on the price because whenever we have tariffs on shit, it's not hurting the countries. Not really. Because what's going to happen is... Companies are still going to have their stuff produced there. They're not just going to pick up their production and move it somewhere else. It would cost them way more money than it would be worth. Plus, God knows if this even lasts. So it's like they would have done this big move, invested all this money in starting a new production company somewhere else. And then the tariffs get dropped and it was like it was all for nothing. Right. Plus, labor laws in different countries and what they would have to pay to produce stuff. It would be too much of an investment on their end for them to do that. So what they're going to do is they're going to keep producing stuff over there at the same rate that they always have. And whatever increases in taxes are put on them, they're just going to give to you, the consumer. And it's like, we are paying for this trade war between us and China. Right. I understand in theory what tariffs are supposed to achieve, but in practical application, it never plays out the way it's supposed to because we always end up paying for it. So my problem is, is that, okay, these tariffs technically won't take effect until the end of the year. So at least these new set of tariffs for electronics and stuff. Mm -hmm. So hopefully tensions die down and we can work something out with China and make this all go away. But the Chinese president, He's basically came out and said, like, hey, you know, b hunker down because we in this shit for the long haul. Trump ain't backing down from this shit. So it's like we're kind of fucked. So 
I know that I'm upset by this, and I'm sure that Benoit, you echo my same sentiments about your frustration with this situation. Well, it's not just the situation with Japan or China. It's he's doing the same shit with Mexico. Yep. Yep. And and it, it's funny because all tariffs tariffs what they're meant to do is tax imports from certain areas in hopes that that tax will prevent Americans from procuring the the goods or services from the other country, which will in turn hurt the country's uh, the other country's GDP. Right. Um. But when. <laughs> In essence, all you're doing is, and it's funny that this happens from the GOP or the right wing because they're the country that's, or the, they're the political party that hates taxes, but these all are effectively just taxes on products. Yeah, yeah. And these taxes, uh, if it's on anything really important, like say metals, or um, you know, like steel, raw or materials, say yeah. coffee beans, or agriculture, anything like that. Uh, effectively, when that goes in, it actually hurts our country more than theirs. Yep. And so this is one big power play that no longer has any real power behind it. Yep. And 25% is a big fucking deal. Yep. And uh, in essence, it's not going to hurt, despite the fact that it decays in Nintendo, if we're 40% of their market. There's still going to be people in the U.S. that buy Nintendo because they offer us something that we can't get anywhere else. So, in essence, it's not really going to hurt them at all. It's going to hurt us, if anything. Yeah. Because we're dishing out more money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now, in theory, to, to, to their defense, yeah, sure, people might not buy as many new PlayStations or new Xboxes or something like that. But, at the same time, I, I don't think it's going to hurt them all that much. Because, I mean... People yeah, they're still going to buy it. Yeah, yeah, people are still going to buy it. I mean, maybe... Especially us avid game players. Exactly, exactly. And, and especially because it's an entertainment thing. Mm-hmm. You know, anything entertainment-wise that's really popular or something that's, you know, a natural resource or a raw material, something that we have to have, mm-hmm. we're going to pay for it. Let's say T-Money says this all the time when we we get the electric bill in. He's. I'm like, oh my god, you know, I can't believe it's X amount of dollars. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, we have to have electric, so we're going to exactly. pay it regardless. Exactly. Or, you know, when the gas gets over $3 a gallon, well, we got to gotta want, have gas in the car, so... Right. If you want to put a tariff on another country's imports to us, then the only real reason it's going to have any uh, balls to it is if we actually produce that product in America itself. Exactly. Right. Cause if we don't, if we don't, if we don't have the raw materials we need, it's going to hurt us big time. Exactly. If we don't produce the goods that we need, tariffs are going to hurt us big time. If we allow companies to outsource their fucking jobs overseas instead of producing stuff in the U S and then put tariffs on that, that's going to hurt us big time. Yeah. We would either have to produce it here ourselves or have another avenue to get it from another country that we do not have tariffs on. And it's like, exactly. no one else is making, you know, gaming consoles and stuff. And most electronics from anything from cell phones to, you know, computers to China, gaming Japan, consoles, Taiwan, right, right. Most of it comes out of China. So it's like they have a big and then now I, I'm mainly focusing because just of the nature of our podcast on the electronic side of it. But there's a tax on clothes, too. Oh, yeah. Do me a favor, listener. Take your shirt off. Look at your tag on the inside of your shirt. Tell me where that shirt was made. Look at your tennis shoes. Look at your jeans. Go grab your favorite jacket out of your closet. And I can almost guarantee you, uh, what? Indonesia, China, Japan, Taiwan. Right, right. But more than most likely, you know... 80% of that stuff. Uh, six to seven times out of ten, it's probably going to say made in China. Mm-hmm. So a lot of this shit that we purchase just, you know, off of necessity, clothes, comes from China. And most of it is cheaper. Yeah. Like, so, so stuff all, that's so, produced in the U.S. Yeah. is usually much more expensive than yeah. stuff that we import from China. Even with the taxes and the tariffs on it. Yeah. It would be... American that's, made, yeah. but it's still more expensive. But that's a joke I always make to people because I work in retail and sometimes I get people. I just had a lady ask me the other day, like, oh, well, where where is this stuff made at? And I'm like, oh, well, you know, like um, Vietnam, China, India, stuff like that. And um, like a lot of different places produce this stuff. And she's like, oh, well, 
you know, um, I, I'm trying to buy American-made products. I'm like, no, you're not. Good luck with that. I'm like, no, you're not. If you, if we produced everything that we imported from other countries in America, nobody would buy it because you, for one, you wouldn't want to pay the prices that you would have to pay for. And two, you couldn't probably afford to pay the prices that you would have to pay for because we won't work for super cheap labor. We have too many labor laws protecting against that kind of stuff. So it's like, you can't have it both ways. You can't want to have living wages, but then get shit for cheap. It, you, you can't have it both ways. You and still expect it to be produced in this country. Right. You have to get oh, yeah. somewhere else. So you can't knock the workers for going on strike, but then get pissed off because they're not producing any of your products. You can't no. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like you, you can't have it both ways. So, I mean, hopefully this does back down, but I mean, as of right now, we have no plans to have any meetings with China about this. Like there, there's a lot of posturing and everybody's having a big dick measuring contest, but I don't know if this is going to blow over before the tariffs take effect or not. I mean, and even, even if, even if Trump doesn't get reelected in 2020, more than most likely you're probably going to have the same issue with the next president that comes in because we've already set, you know, the, the, the terms for, for the terrorists and stuff. And then, you know, the, what the right will do is make it an issue of, oh, well, see, we were we were winning the trade war, even if we're not, you know, us as the consumer, we're not winning shit. We're getting fucked. But I was like, we were winning the trade war with China. And, you know, you know, let's just say, you know, for argument, Bernie Sanders, you know, backs down and it's like, oh, well, see, and, and they're giving the Chinese what they want. And, and this is why they're taking our jobs and, you know, everything's produced over there and yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. It's it's just frustrating. It's funny because uh, Mel is currently going through, you know, the jackets and stuff in the house and trying to check and see what's made in China. What did you find so far? I found one out of three made in China. See, so that's what I'm saying. I'm like, and I I looked at three jackets and a Beats by Dre holder. Mm-hmm. The Beats by Dre holder has no determination because it doesn't have a tag. Sure, okay. So one out of three. Yeah, so I'm like a third of almost in everything. My immediate yeah, vicinity. yeah, just right now, and I'm like, that's a lot of shit. And in like in a 25 percent tax hike is like Benoit said, that's a really big number. You know, if it was five, ten, it might be negligible enough to where you wouldn't notice, but 25 percent, like that is crazy. So I mean, I don't know, and and it sucks because we are on the cusp of the new you know, gaming consoles, then, you know, the next gen consoles that'll be coming out within the next year or two. So if this tariff does go into effect, that's going to fuck us, man. Like, so, I mean, if you're looking forward to the PS five or the Xbox, whatever the fuck, you know, I guess get it early. If you can, you know, pre-order that shit now, because if you can't shit, it's going to cost you out the ass when it does. Oh, yeah, it's kind of hard to compete on a global economy when, say, China, for instance, the average wage there, the median wage there is about a third of what it is in the U.S., you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, so we'll, we'll see what happens with this going forward. Um, We're definitely going to keep an eye on this because I'm really interested to see how all this plays out going forward. And I mean, hopefully... I don't think this has ever been so effective on... Not effective, but have so much effect on us, huh? No, no, no. I mean, for the most part, I mean, we've we've had tariffs on, you know, China in the past and we've had issues with them in trade and them, you know, not respecting intellectual property rights and stuff like that. And because, I mean, you know, let's be honest, China makes a lot of bootleg shit. And and if you go over there right now, you can buy all kind of shit on bootleg and it's like knockoff iPhones and all kind of other shit like that. So they've always had an issue with not really playing fair, at least by the U.S. standards for as far as trade and, you know, intellectual property rights and all that kind of stuff. So this has been an ongoing issue. I just don't necessarily know if tariffs are necessarily the way to go because it's not really hurting them. It's going to really hurt us. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll see. But anyway, 
Um, that is it for the show. Uh, remember, you can always find us at our home, one giant leap for geeks. We are also on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, I should say, I guess yes, now. Yes, you should. <laughs> Spotify, Google Play, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. Make sure to show us some love. So go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, rate, follow, review, and all that shit. And if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or criticisms, you just want to say hi, um, you can email the show at officialogfg at gmail.com. You can also find us as a show on Twitter at Giant Leap, the number four geeks. Um, myself, I am on Twitter at Froggy Beaver, and Benoit is on Twitter at um, Benoit Gaming. <laughs> B E N W. Froggy Benoit. Yeah, Gaming. Froggy Benoit. Nope. Benoit is just at Benoit Gaming. It's B E N W A H Gaming. And those are all our Twitter handles. You can find the show on Facebook, Reddit, Instagram. Um, I am also on Instagram, but nobody follows me. <laughs> Um, All you have to do is search for One Giant Leap for Geeks. All right. You guys have a great night. Bye.